Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name's Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral. Thank you for joining us this morning on this second day of December. Let us begin. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Our canticle for this morning is the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord of heaven and earth, of life and love, of peace and hope, it is in you that we live and move and have our being. We greet you this morning. We salute you. We thank you for this new day, for this chance to be alive. Because of you, dear Lord, we are both forgiven and free. May we sense your gentle touch as you help us up and out of our early morning fits and starts. Please open our minds and our eyes, our hearts, and our hands. Help us to see and experience you in all the corners of our lives, in all dimensions of your creation. Please continue to push us and pull us so that we can better know and love you. Dear Lord, hang in there and hang tough with us and with those for whom we pray, because we need your help and your courage. We need your understanding and your grace. We need your perspective and your peace. We need your patience and your healing. And more than anything, we need you. Amen. Our collect for today Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for this Thursday morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 21 through 27. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, 
because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. What have you built your life upon? That's the question for all of us this morning. What grounds you in life? What defines you? What serves as the foundation of your life? The one thing that you would cling to if you were forced to give up everything else. To me, this is the essential spiritual question for every human being. Because I think we all ground our lives in something, perhaps several things. But the goal of the spiritual life is to make sure we have not grounded our lives, based our lives on a lie or a deception. Have you ever read Tolstoy's novella called The Death of Ivan Ilyich? I first read it in my early 20s, and it was a transformational book for me. The Death of Ivan Ilyich tells the story of a lawyer, Ivan Ilyich, and his relationship with his wife and his children. Ilyich spends most of his adult life focused on success. He climbs the ladder of his career, and along with his wife, they climb the ladder of society. The money they make, the home they live in, the circles they run in, these things are the most important things to them. They are the foundation upon which their life is built. As a result, there is a shallowness to them, even, even to their children. Their relationships are strained and superficial. Success and good standing are all that really matters. And as a result, their lives are rather hollowed out. One day, Ivan Ilyich falls while hanging some curtains. And what seems to be a superficial injury becomes quite serious, and Ivan realizes that he is dying. The remainder of the book is spent with Ilyich on his deathbed, slowly coming to terms with what his life was and what it should have been, and the realization that he had missed the mark. The realization that, when, that what Ivan created as the foundation of his life was not something that could sustain him and give him any real meaning as he faced his own mortality. I won't say any more so as not to further ruin the book for you, but it is a short read well worth your time. The point here is what Jesus is trying to tell us this morning. We can build our lives on almost anything. The drive for success and standing as Ivan Ilyich did. The desire for power as many here in Washington do. The acclamation of wealth or fame. We can base our lives, ground our lives even on things like sex or food or alcohol or adventure. The point is, whatever it is we pick to serve as the foundation of life, whether we choose whatever, whatever we choose to build our house upon, as Jesus talks about, is that foundation something that will ultimately sustain you? Is it something that can, on your deathbed, be seen as worthwhile? Because if we build our lives on the wrong things, then when the difficult times come, when the crises hit, when our mortality comes into question, then that foundation will fall away like a house built on sand. 
Jesus wants his followers and all of us to know that it is only the life built on the love of God, the love of neighbor, and service to others that lasts the tests of time, that gives us something to hold on to even when life comes to its conclusion. It is the life that imitates Jesus' life that satisfies us in the end. This Advent, ask yourself the question, where do I stand? Upon what foundation have I built my life? And is it a foundation I can depend on? Amen. Now would you join with me as we say together, pray together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. You alone understand the burdens we carry and the pain that we bear. As we make our way through this life, through this day, we need your healing grace. Give us not only those things that we ask for, but more importantly, give us those things that we need. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. On this morning, we lift up to you all those who are on our hearts and minds today. Eileen, Joe, Eliza. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord of every body, every time, every place, of everything I sense and see and feel and hear, I thank you that I am still alive and kicking. I thank you for my life, my love, my liberty, for my health and my well-being. I thank you for what I hold in my heart and my hands today, for your incredible creation, for those I love and for those who love me. I thank you for yet another chance to be useful and creative. I thank you for this day with all its unfolding challenges. I thank you for the wondrous gift of yourself in Jesus, and especially for your promise of a life everlasting. And last, but certainly not least, I thank you for listening to my scattered prayers. Thank you, gracious and loving and patient Lord. Thank you. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen.